Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our May Community Wise podcast, a, a podcast hosted by Liz Greater Kansas City. I am Holly Long, your host, and it is May, which means it is Small Business Month. So what happens in Small Business Month? We're going to talk a little bit about that, but really we want to get to the meat and potatoes of this conversation. And we have the one, the only, Miss Simone Curls, who is the executive director um, of Prospect Business Association. And welcome, Simone. Thank you, Holly, for having me. This is um, going to be fun. I'm excited. Yeah, I am too, as you can tell. <laughs> um, well, we wanted to bring you on just to talk about small business and, and any tips that you have for small business owners. And in our pre, well, let's go back a little bit about you. You are a Southern graduate. Correct. <laughs> yes. Xavier undergrad, Southern Graduate School. Yes, I am. I am. Cool. And then um, you lived in LA. Can you tell us a little bit about what did you do? What organization you founded in LA? And then how, why and how did you transplant back to Kansas City? Okay. So while I was in LA, um, I owned my own business. Um, consulting firm for over 15 years. I also founded a nonprofit um, to help youth in foster care. And so that's kind of my passion, um, one of them. And um, I came back to Kansas City just kind of on a whim. And um, I'm glad I did. Um, and I'm back, you know, here, you know, working, um, working with the small businesses, which is what I love to do. Okay. And so you work for the Pro our Prospect Business Association. We like to call it PBA in our list world. And we love yes. you guys as partners. So thank you so much for that. <laughs> um, just a little bit of details about PBA. What, why PBA? It was created in 2013, right? Yes. What yes. happened? How did it happen? And where so are we now? So let's, um, I'm sorry, Liz, Jesus, your job. <laughs> um, PBA was created um, to help um, black owned businesses. We are um, a portal. We provide business training programs. We provide consulting, tech assistance, accounting, legal services, marketing, all those things that specifically black owned businesses will need to grow, thrive and to scale up. And so that's something that, you know, you know, I've done for over um, uh, 15 years. And so that is also a passion. So I'm here, I'm doing it and we need the services badly. Okay, so hi, Sierra. She's joining us from our LISC office in San Diego. She's just coming on to to see what is a community wise podcast. So Sierra, you're on camera. Uh, if you could, if you want to stay on camera, that's fine. Or if you want to take yourself off camera, that's cool too. Whatever. Hi Sierra. Hi Simone. How and are you doing? doing? Good. <laughs> Good. So, Simone yes. is my middle name. So I happen to be kind of excited that that is your name. So oh, great. <laughs> kindred spirits, kindred spirits. There you Absolutely. go. And, on, ladies. and then Carry the Cali on. connection there for sure. So, okay. We were talking in our pre-podcast production yes. um, mm -hmm. yes. about what you want black business owners and what you want small business owners, because we're not just talking exclusively about black business owners. We're talking about small business, all business whatever business. kind of business, mm -hmm. all business, because mm -hmm. we all need your advice. What would you want us to know more than anything and what to I understand? Want, what I want all businesses to know and to understand is now is the time. I know we've been through COVID. I know we're still coming out, but now is the time for us to really figure out what we want to do. There are dollars on the street. There are resources to actually, you know, um, to help us pivot and to help us um, scale up and grow. So again, now is the time. Um, there are just so many things coming down from the federal governments, from the state governments, um, you know, that can really help and to assist us to grow and to thrive and to make it through this. That makes sense. So, okay, say that I am like one of your clients, right? And I come in your mm -hmm. office and I have no idea what the heck I'm doing in life, but I know <laughs> I want to be a small business owner okay, and I have okay. this passion for something, right? Yes. 
walk me through like what a, a intake process, what a client coaching session looks like. What, what do I need to have all my ducks in a row? Like what, what happens? So when you come in, we'll do a basic one-on-one, -on -one, um, uh, you know, um, assessment with you. We're going to discuss your business, your business goals, objectives. What is your plan? What is it that you want to do? That is so very important. Um, what's your commitment to your business? Business is not a nine to five. You're going to work weekends, evenings, late. The other question that I often have for people, is this a business or is this a hobby? This takes commitment. So if this is something that you really are not committed to putting in the time and the effort, then let's really talk about that. Your back office needs. Most businesses are good at their service and their products, but sometimes the back offices really struggle. Um, and so what is the back What's office? The back office? office, yeah. <laughs> So your back office is your accounting needs, your bookkeeping, your POS systems, your time management, um, organizational skills are absolutely imperative for your business to continue to thrive and grow. The other question, what's your competitive edge? You know, that's important because you're not the only business doing what you do. And so why you? And so that's something that we need to talk about. Also, money. Money is something that everybody needs, right? Just to get started. I still have calls from people going, is there startup funds? And the reality is, is that absolutely very small, minimal to none. So where are you gonna get the money from? Most small businesses actually start with money from their retirement, money they have, friends and family. And so what is your projection forward? And the last one is certifications. Certifications are so very, very, very important as you grow and scale. You know, woman-owned, veteran-owned, you know, those type of certifications. So that's kind of how we'll get started. So kind of speaking on that whole banking idea, I, mm -hmm. from my research, I found that you guys um, literally bring the banks to your clients. Yes, and yes. you teach them the difference between being bankable and banking. Can you break that down for us and explain <laughs> to us, like, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. You know, we all have to be bankable if we're going to go into business. So I say having forming a banking relationship versus banking. So number one, you need to form a banking relationship. That means you need to know your bank, who's in the bank, who's the branch manager, um, because the reason why that's important is, is that if you're going in for a loan, they need to know you. Banks want to be courted believe it or not. They want to know who they're doing business with. Banking is, I'm going in, I have my checks, I deposit them, I leave. You need to become a um, number one client of that bank. The other thing is, is that banks all have appetites for something specific. Some banks may be more into um, uh, real estate. Some banks may be more into retail. And so if you're real estate based, right, industry, and the bank that you're at is more into retail, that may not work well for you. And so how do you figure it out? You actually go in, ask to speak with the branch manager, make an appointment, and let's talk. The other thing that small businesses need to understand from my, um, from my perspective is, is you're putting your money someplace. Your money has values. Banking is a business as well. So, you know, value your dollar. You're putting your money into a bank so they can make money as well. So you do have a say. Take the time, figure out what bank is best for your industry. And also, if you're with the bank and they're not supplying your needs, hey, switch. There's nothing wrong with switching as well. Okay. So like the access to capital, right? And mm -hmm. being like we talked about being bankable. Talk to me about where your credit comes in, like your taxes come in, what all those different adult things. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that and how that affects me as a small business owner or my chances of becoming a small business owner. <laughs> you know what, <laughs> Holly, that is such a great question. Taxes are so important. So when you go for um, a loan, 
which at some point most businesses, small or large, are going to go for. They're going to ask for your taxes, right? And so let's just take a typical LLC that generates a Schedule C. That line 31 on your Schedule C is one of the many ways that they actually decide whether or not to give you a loan. And so what that means is, is that that line 31 also for a business is how much money you pay in taxes. I know, I know, I know we try not to pay a lot in taxes. Right. So let's just have <laughs> hypothetically say, say right? right, because I've had this happen. I've had businesses come in and say, look, 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 I've made $300,000. Well, after all the deductions, all the expenses, that line 31 says all you have left is $2,000. So for you, when it comes time for paying taxes, you're like, yay. But for the bank, they're saying you made all this money, but you don't have anything left over. So $2,000, why am I going to give you a loan? You can't pay the loan back. And so one of the conversations in the one-on-one -on -one coaching is really looking at, at some point, we're going to have to show um, that we have money, you know, in the bank, uh, meaning via the taxes that actually I brought in this money and that I have money left over to be able to actually get this loan. That also makes you bankable. Um, if you have your line 31 is a negative, right? And so you're saying, yay, for taxes, I may not owe, but for the bank, what you're telling them is I made $300,000 and I have absolutely no money left over. They're going, how do you bring in $300,000 and have no money for two to three to four to five years? So that does affect you getting a loan. Also, people don't understand that, especially if this is a first time um, bank loan, they are going to use your personal credit. They are going to utilize your personal credit, um, whether we like it or not, that is what they do. And so we have a financial series that we put on and we actually bring in banks and it's called From the Eyes of the Lender. So they talk to our businesses about what they're seeing and what they're looking for. And so people start talking about collateral. Banks are saying, hey, you know what? Mm, collateral may not be really meaningful to us because we don't want to liquidate the assets just to get our money back. We don't want your house. We don't really want your boat. So again, let's look at the bank, what their appetite is for the industry that you have. And in the event you do go for a loan, what is it that they're going to require? Mm. So funny you should say that, right? This yeah. is bringing that conversation that we had about doing business and being in business. Yes. The difference. Yes. Huge. And it seems, huge. It's huge, right? It's huge. And it seems, <laughs> right? And it seems like, you know, if I'm a business, if I'm trying to do business, right? And mm -hmm. I'm just, you know, have my little side hustle, say me and Raylan are making cakes or something like that. Mm -hmm. We gonna sell them after church. Mm -hmm. okay, and then okay. we decide like, okay, we need to take this on the road and like starts, you know, X, Y, mm -hmm. and Z. So I feel like that's me doing business versus me being in business. And it kind of goes into like your banking and, and knowing like the, the lack of information that I know, right? Yeah. So can you talk to us a little bit more about what you would do to establish yourself as being in business versus mm -hmm. me and Raylan just selling cakes <laughs> just because? <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys selling cakes would be great, but we actually have businesses who have been in business. I've talked to individuals. I talked to someone on Friday. She actually has um, a shop within a building um, she's been in business, believe it or not, for over a decade and she's just doing business. She has no business license. She's really not incorporated. And so when she goes to get a loan to scale up, she can't get one because she doesn't have the appropriate paperwork. We actually call those informal businesses. So you're doing business, you start a lawn company and you start doing, you know, one or two lawns and then all of a sudden you have 50, but you never take the time to go get your actual paperwork. You are not actually being in business. How does that affect you? That affects your loans. That also that also has affected businesses getting grants, believe it or not. Grants are free money. But the grant individual wants to know, the grantor wants to see your business on paper, um, uh, your EIN, 
your taxes, you must pay taxes. I hate to say that, uh, but you know, I've had business tell me, well, I don't want to pay taxes. I'm like, okay, um, so you have to pay your taxes. Um, you know, your EIN, all of that information is so imperative. So that's the difference between doing business. I also have people who are in real estate. Um, and during during PPP, I had a guy, I saw his taxes. He filed a Schedule E, which is supplemental income because he sold, um, he flipped houses on the side. However, he never incorporated. So although technically from his perspective, he's in business, he technically was just doing business because he never officially incorporated. And so that's something that small businesses really, really, really need to do is take the time, get your paperwork together and ready, and let's become formal. Um, formal. Okay, that's this is a good little transition we're going to go into. <laughs> uh, we were talking about small businesses are on like a crisis mode at all times, right? Yes. Yes. And yes. we want to get as small business owners get out of that crisis mode. Can yes. you talk to us about a little bit about what that crisis mode looks like? And then how can we as small business owners decide, okay, I am not in business. I'm doing, I mean, I'm in business and I'm not just doing business. I'm not going to be in crisis mode. I'm going to be incorporated. I'm going to do all these things. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yes. Yeah, so when I see crisis mode, it's the point where, I'm going to have an example where um, the business has grown, right? And the cash flow doesn't come in as quickly as you need it to be for payroll. Let's say that. So you actually need to get maybe a loan. I would recommend more so possibly a line of credit. But your back office, your accounting isn't in order. Your, um, your books aren't in order. Um, your taxes are showing a negative or very little. Um, you know, money's, money's left over. Um, and all of those things. So now you're in crisis. I need money. I need money right now. Um, those things of not being prepared and staying and always getting ready. I mean, I'm sorry, staying ready so you don't have to get ready in the end. Those are the things. And so how do we mitigate that? How do we break that cycle? One is we have to plan. Plan, 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 plan. What is your plan? Where do you want to be? Short and long-term goals. That's what um, um, BDOs do. That's what PBA does. We help you sit down and actually plan. Also, know your market. What's out there? Who's out there? Also, what are your costs? If you're selling services and products, you should know your cost. You should know this spoon, this fork, this you know set of shoes all of your materials what are those costs so therefore you'll know how to plan always 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 know your competitors okay because they're out there doing things the last one is um given COVID, we've been thrown more so than ever into this technology world we have to always stay abreast of what's going on, how to pivot the technology. And with all of that, what is your niche? You are not the only person in your industry, but what's your niche? What sets you apart? And that goes back to planning. And those are those things that here at PBA, we help you do. It's funny you mentioned COVID, right? In our pre-production conversation, we were talking about um a lot of businesses were birthed out of COVID because of necessity. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about the technology, whereas in the eighties, we didn't really have the technology to, you know, become, I don't know, like a, a YouTuber and X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also asked you in the same conversation, what are your thoughts on this? Is it a trend to be an entrepreneur right now? Or is it something that's always been? So what are your thoughts about, the necessity creeping in during COVID, um, people becoming entrepreneurial, um, and where do, where do we go from there? Well, I think because of COVID and people were unemployed, right? Then people have to survive. And so I think when those survival skills click in, you do what you know. 
And so I, um, I believe the number during COVID um, is about, there have been about estimate um, from KCBiz here, estimate about 2000 new businesses that have started. Um, but being in small business, there are about 30 million small businesses in the US before the pandemic. That's a lot. Um, and so I think out of that, that there is an appetite and always has been an appetite for small businesses. Also for um, the Gen X, the millennials, this technology has afforded them opportunities that never existed. How do you use technology to do business? And so the YouTubers, things that, you know, I'm be honest with you, I really don't understand. I'm like, now, how does this work? <laughs> right, what is this? Right. Wait a minute, you're making money from what? Well, really? Um, and so I think that due to technology, even prior to the pandemic, that our millennials and our Gen X have found a way to actually um, go into a new industry that just never existed. So I think um, um, entrepreneurship is on the upswing out of necessity due to COVID, but um, it has always been there. So I got two more questions. Okay. And we're going to start okay. wrapping up. Um, we talked about BDOs and we talked about ESOs. Mm -hmm. So what are those and why is it, why are they so important for entrepreneurs um, to tap into those networks? Okay. BDOs and ESOs are synonymous. Um, ESO, Entrepreneurial Support Organization, or BDO, Business Development Organization. Again, they're synonymous. Um, and why are they important and why are they valuable? I find that they are actually completely valuable um, in the fact that they provide the tech support, the assistance, the training, the coaching, and the consulting that is actually needed. If you think about it, we only really look at training um, and schooling, you know, once we graduate, right? Even if you went to college, if you went to a trade school, once you graduate, how do we continue to learn and to hone in and to scale up? And so this is what we offer. Um, also the supports and the resources, how to navigate the system, who's where, where do I go? Um, that hands-on, one-on-one that's needed. How do we help um, you pivot? Um, ESOs and BDOs actually sit down with you and help you pivot, help you figure this thing out. Um, the training helps you to stay abreast, stay fresh, stay, um, stay fresh, stay up on the new trends, what's going on in your industry. Also, it helps you understand what's going on on a local level, a state level, and a federal level for you to figure out how to continuously pivot. You cannot be in business and stay stagnant. Um, also, BDOs, ESOs, we are advocates. We help to bridge the gap. We help to tell people such as bankers, hey, here are some issues. How do we start to turn the tide? Um, we are the navigators for the businesses within the community to really help businesses grow, sustain, and scale. That's a great appeal for those uh, millennials or, or Gen Xers who came up um, during COVID and found their niche and with the technology. And that's a great way of segueing into making sure everyone has the proper education, the, the resources and the connections necessary, not only to have this idea, but to further the idea. So that's awesome. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. And then the last closing question. Okay. Okay. So I'm a, I'm a millennial. I created this business during COVID. I, I'm on YouTube. I'm selling, I'm doing whatever. I have getting all these likes. Mm-hmm. How do I parlay that into generational wealth for my children and my grandchildren? Wow, great question. Um, one thing that we have to understand is, is that um, small businesses actually help to create generational wealth, especially um, within um, the urban core and within local communities. Small businesses, number one, hire. And so when we start looking at, from our perspective here at PBA, you're building a healthy community. And so actually flipping that into, and there's, and I say the difference between 
um, being self-employed and being a business owner. Um, those millennials, you're self-employed, but how do you parlay that and pivot and translate that into a full-blown business where there are systems, where there are employees, where that whether you're there or not, your operation continues to churn and grow and run, which means now you can hire people, right? Which means now people can actually buy a home. Um, and so as you continue to grow in that company, your business begins to thrive. You can do internships. You can, um, you know, um, uh, um, start various programs, donate. Generational wealth is something that is um, basic business one-on-one -on -one that if we can get it done right, you can grow. Certifications are something. Looking after um, going after federal grants is, is another way. We help you with that here. BDOs do as well. All of them do. And so this is something that for us to really look at, let's not stay in the self-employed mode. Self-employed means whether you, um, unless you do it, it doesn't get done. Business owner means is that you're putting in the systems, the policy in place for your organization to grow and thrive. Any last words, advice, solicitations <laughs> you wanna give? <laughs> Our small business owners who are listening to your every word, anything you want to say? You know, I know that we're in the middle of COVID. Um, I know that we're still um, looking and struggling. You know, find um, a BDO. PBA is available. But if not PBA, find a BDO to really be able to sit down with you. Sometimes um, that third person can actually possibly see things um, that maybe you don't see in the moment. The world will continue to grow and change. Um, so all BDOs are here to help you and to support you, um, you know, grow and thrive and um, uh, and to stay vital. Um, we know that small businesses are the crux and the heart of the business community. We wish you the most um, luck and um, and success in all that you do. Um, Lisk, thank you so much for everything that you do to help the BDO so that we can continue to help the um, to to help the businesses and the communities. Simone Curls, thank you so much for being our guest this month on our May's um podcast small business owners or small business month and that this is for the small business owners uh, we wish you nothing but success and thank you for being such an awesome partner to work with uh with Liz thank you guys for everything all right see you next month guys bye you guys bye.